My mum has a 2,000 day streak on Duolingo learning Spanish, but she can't even speak Spanish. Sorry, mum. That being said, in this video, I'm going to explain to you why you will never become fluent in English or another language just by using Duolingo. And I'm going to explain to you what you should be doing instead. So with that said, let's get the show on the road. Welcome to English with Lewis. Let's go. The first point is the fact that Duolingo has very limited depth and context. And when it comes to learning a language, we need all of this specific information, these nuances. We need to know who is speaking, what the scenario is, while Duolingo doesn't really give you any of that. What it does give you is some nice short sentences like the cat eats cheese or the dog is happy. And of course, as you advance and progress using Duolingo, you will encounter some more complex structures and sentences, but it's always going to be in short examples, which are nice and easy on the eye. So it looks good when you are using the application, but it won't give you long articles with these specific examples, nuances, and this is what Duolingo is really missing. You see, language learning isn't just about memorizing. It's not about memorizing simple phrases. What it's more about is having real life conversations, which will set you up for your next job interview, presentation, or little chit chat in a pub. So remember that with Duolingo, it's always going to be very limited with little depth. And that is a problem. The second point is that Duolingo gives you a lack of speaking practice. It's all about the gamification and filling out simple examples, reordering the text, doing all of these little fun and possibly useful games, but they're not really going to help you to speak the language. And what is the most important thing when it comes to learning a language? In my opinion, it is speaking. People don't ask you, do you understand the language? They don't ask you if you know the language. They ask you, do you speak English? <laughs> so if you're not practicing your speaking, you're not going to improve your speaking. And yes, with Duolingo, it does use some AI in order to provide you with practice, in order to, I don't know, have a little conversation with a bot. And this, of course, it will help. It's not going to do you any harm. But if you want to improve your conversation skills, you need to have conversations. And this, again, Duolingo is not covering these bases. So you're not going to improve your fluency and your speaking skills just by using Duolingo. You need to find someone to have a little chat with, either online, on Zoom, in a bar, who knows? But if you want to improve your speaking, you need to speak. It's like going to the gym. If you want to get stronger, you need to lift weights. You need to work out. There is no magic pill that you can take in order to become fluent in a language. I wish, but <laughs> it's not the case. The third point is something I mentioned previously, and it is gamification, making language learning a game. And this initially sounds like a very positive point and it makes it more addictive. So then you want to pick up your phone and continue studying and keep learning the language that you are studying. However, it does come with a danger and it's a little bit of a double edged sword because sometimes users of Duolingo will focus so much on maintaining the streak, <coughs> my mum, that they will only really care about studying Duolingo for 10 minutes a day, making sure that you're ticking off that box which says that you are continuing your 2000 day streak. But perhaps you're not thinking about the structures of the phrases that you're learning, or you're not really learning the new words because 
you're just in a rush to make sure that you complete your daily 10 minutes of Duolingo. And this can be a little bit dangerous because you can focus much more on the game than on the learning. The same principle applies with exams at school. And there is always a debate about maybe we give children too many exams. So then they are studying for the exam, trying to cram as much information in their brains as possible. And then they do the exam and after that, they forget. This certainly happened to me that the educational system is kind of focused too much on just having qualifications, doing exams, and it's not really focused on the learning itself. And a similar thing is happening with Duolingo, not with exams, but with games and streaks and reputation, which distracts your attention from actually improving your language skills and just makes you want to look good and show off. Look at me, I've got a 2000 day streak, woohoo! But you don't speak the language. Number four is a nice simple one and it's hard to criticize Duolingo too much for this, but I have to make the point. And it is that Duolingo is an app that is used by hundreds of millions of people around the globe. And it's great, it's fun, but it has a one size fits all strategy where they have one application and then of course you have different levels, you can progress through the application, but there's no nuance again. You don't have specific goals that the application can kind of adapt and tailor its approach to your learning so that you are specifically learning uh, business vocabulary or going over some grammar that you really struggle with. And of course, I'm comparing the differences between having Duolingo and having an English teacher. Because with an English teacher, you can tell your teacher exactly what you want to focus on and then your teacher is able to prepare and customize your course so that you are meeting the goals that you've set out at the beginning of your course or your class. With Duolingo, it has one solution and one course for every single user. So you're never going to get this little attention and care and the preparation that you need in order to uh, practice a job interview, to give a presentation in English, to uh, move abroad to Ireland and work in a pub. It's an example, but basically Duolingo provides one solution for all of the users and human beings. We are all very, very different. We have different expectations and goals and this happens when we set out a goal of learning a language like English. We need a course that is specific to our needs and Duolingo does not do this. We're halfway through the video and number five is that Duolingo provides very little grammar help. The app doesn't really focus on grammar at all. It focuses on vocabulary, vocabulary and vocabulary. It's all about the words for Duolingo. It's not about the conversation that I mentioned previously and they don't really put that much emphasis on grammar lessons either. And depending on the language, this isn't the biggest deal. It's not the biggest problem because some languages, if you are French and you're learning Italian, a lot of the grammar is quite similar. And if you're learning English, well, you probably already know a lot of the grammar because you'll have learned it at school. So then your past simple, present perfect, conditionals and things like this, you maybe already know it like the back of your hand. But when you move on to languages that have, let's say, difficult grammatical structures like Russian or German, then it really becomes apparent that Duolingo is not designed for teaching you all of these specific rules and practice in grammar. And in my opinion, in order to actually learn the grammar, you need to be using it in conversation again. So 
So when I'm teaching grammar, I'll first go over some of the rules, give some explanations, get my students to fill out some sentences and complete their own sentences, creating them, and then use grammatical structures in conversation over and over again drilling it until it becomes second nature, until it becomes something natural for them. So with Duolingo, again, the problem is it's just focused on memorizing simple vocabulary and structures like this. It doesn't really give you any explanations or any kind of solutions for grammar doubts that you might have. For that, Google or ChatGPT is much better, to be honest. Number six is the fact that Duolingo gives you almost nothing in terms of cultural immersion. And again, it depends on the learner, but for many people, the reason why they are learning a language is to understand more about the culture. And it's really cool and rewarding when you really start to understand uh, reading a language or listening to that language and you can consume normal media in that language. Let's say if I started learning Arabic, which I would like to, but I think it'd be very complicated, then it would be really interesting to start developing a level and an understanding so that I could start to immerse myself in the culture and really understand what people say in the news, what people say on reality TV programs or perhaps TV series. And Duolingo doesn't do any of this. Um, they might incorporate a few very, very short, simple conversations with native speakers. So then you can understand specific structures that you might have studied previously, but it's never going to enable you to immerse yourself in the culture. And for me, the two things go hand in hand. So culture and language, they're closely linked and you can't really have one without having the other. And again, it's a beautiful thing about learning a language that you can watch the series, you can read the news, you can follow famous people and you can understand how they think and how they write and how that culture really interacts with each other. And this is a beautiful thing. Duolingo doesn't offer any of this. Maybe it would be a good idea for Duolingo to add more articles from the news or different blog posts. So then you'd actually get comprehensible input and you could start understanding and learning new vocabulary, how it's actually used in the real world and Duolingo's content isn't real words, phrases that are used by native speakers because there's no cultural immersion. And this, for me, is key. Number seven is that Duolingo relies too much on translation. There is an over-reliance on translation. For many of the simple activities and games that you have to do, you need to translate from your mother tongue into the language that you are studying, let's say English in this case. And as I mentioned in my last video last week, uh, check it out somewhere around here, to really become fluent and feel confident and feel like you are speaking naturally, you need to start thinking in that language. And if you are always translating from one language to another, then you're always going to be taking a while to produce the sentences for your brain to kind of compute what is going on. If someone asks you a question and then you're like, okay, what did they say? I need to translate it and then reply. The reaction time is so much longer. Whereas if when somebody asks you a question, you can respond like that because you are thinking in English, then you're going to come across as being much more proficient in that language, much more confident, and I'm sure this will aid you and help you in communicating better and building a stronger relationship with whoever is asking you the question. So simply put, Duolingo usually relies too much on translations, and this could be good at the beginning when you are in 
a beginner or maybe a pre-intermediate student, but at some point you need to kind of take a leap of faith and just go for it, go out of your comfort zone and start just using English when you see a new word or phrase. Use a dictionary in English as well. Change the language on your phone, your laptop and all of these different things to little by little force you to start thinking in English or the language that you are studying and stop translating because it can help if you use it just a little bit, but we cannot be over-reliant on translation. Mm -mm. Finally, last but not least, number eight is that Duolingo neglects listening skills. And it also neglects reading and understanding skills. Basically, what it neglects is any sentence or conversation that lasts more than like 10 seconds. So it's always going to be in little pills, little drops, very, very small sentences and short activities, which isn't what you need to learn a language. You need to be a reading in depth and listening, listening and listening as much as possible. Uh, like listening to this video or watching this video. But not only this, this is of course related to language learning, but listening to anything that you are interested in. Um, the news, music, sport. There are endless resources online, on YouTube, on Spotify, that you can access to find, again, comprehensible input. And this is content that is difficult to understand, but you understand about 60, 70, or 80% of it. And that is enough to be able to enjoy the content and take in enough of the information without worrying and getting stressed and getting lost and ultimately giving up. And Duolingo, again, it doesn't provide you with podcasts on the application. It doesn't provide you with long enough conversations. It doesn't provide you with anything that is long enough to really focus, concentrate, and take in this comprehensible input. It's always too short and it doesn't allow for natural speech, which on a podcast right now, of course, I have uh, a little bit of a guide to be able to recite all of this information, but I have bullet points and the rest. I'm just speaking off the cuff. I'm just improvising and making it up as I go along. I know what Duolingo is like and I know what the limitations of Duolingo are, which is why if I have a bullet point, I can start speaking naturally a little bit slower, with some hesitations from time to time. But all of this is natural, and all native English speakers are going to speak like this. They're not always going to be reading off a piece of paper. They're not going to have a prepared dialogue that they have to speak. So, basically, with this, the problem is that Duolingo doesn't provide you with listening practice or reading practice, to be honest. It's always too focused on vocabulary and gamification. So that being said, listen to podcasts. It's much more fun anyway. Go on, listen to podcasts. That being said, I was just thinking, you know, when you think that you speak good English or you think that you've reached a high level and then you meet up with a group of people, maybe native English speakers, and then they start using slang and phrasal verbs and idioms, and they don't speak slowly or clearly, and they're always interrupting each other at the same time. And then you think to yourself, oh my God, I have no idea what they're talking about. Well, <laughs> again, if you're only using Duolingo, or if you're depending too much on Duolingo, this is going to happen to you again and again, because you won't be used to listening to real conversations and real speech. So, I said it before, 
I'll say it again. Listen to podcasts and watch videos and concentrate on what they're saying. It's a much better and more efficient way of becoming proficient in a language, whether it's English or any other language. So in conclusion, it may seem like I've been hating on Duolingo a lot during this video, and to a certain extent, it's true, but I have Duolingo on my phone. I've used it previously. I don't mind it. Like, if you want to use something that makes you feel like you are staying motivated at learning a language and you enjoy the gamified aspect of the app, then be my guest. Go ahead, keep practicing. Again, it's not going to do you any harm. It's not going to hinder your learning as long as you are also doing the other things I mentioned, which are reading as much as possible in that language, listening as much as possible in that language. And then, of course, with just these passive skills, uh, you're not really going to be able to speak. So we need to start speaking, having conversations. If you can, of course, you can uh, contact an English teacher or another language teacher to help you develop confidence and have clear objectives and a teacher who can tailor the course to your needs and objectives. And essentially, you need to be immersing yourself in the language and the culture. The more you consume, the better. And if you are constantly reviewing and going over new words, new phrases, new grammar, then it will help for those things to stick in your head. Because most of us, you know, we've got a lot going on in our lives. We don't have time to solely focus on language learning. So uh, if you learn a word and then you don't review it, it's going to go in one ear and out the other. And that's normal. You need to see this word and write it down or say it out loud five or ten times before you really master it and it goes from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. And again, we can only do this by immersing ourselves in the language and speaking as much as possible. So hopefully I have motivated you to start immersing yourself in the language that you're learning a little bit more, whether that's English or any other language, because I love language learning in general. Of course, I'm an English teacher, but I speak Spanish. I can get by in Italian, Portuguese and French. And I'd love to learn a more difficult language like Chinese or Arabic, but I haven't got the time. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed listening to me just improvising and speaking about why Duolingo will never help you to become fluent in English or another language and what you should do instead or on top of using Duolingo. Um, if you have made it this far, um, I'd encourage you to sign up for my weekly newsletter where I send you a short story with advanced expressions or phrasal verbs. It will be in the video description. And that way, whenever I announce new classes, of course, you will be the first ones to be informed. Woohoo! So thank you again, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye! Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and see you next time!